Um, <laughs> that's gonna have some horrible time complexity. And then you've got another O of N squared operation here. So that's basically three O of N squared. Hello people. Today we're gonna be going through some of my old programming projects and I'm going to be embarrassing myself and then attempting to fix my code. And hopefully you'll learn something along the way as well as I go through my code. So we're gonna start with my search engine, which um, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's an awful project. It's truly awful. I really don't know why the video did so well. So as you can see Fireship pointing out, I made this project in JavaScript. I don't know why I chose to do this. I think it's because it's the only language I was comfortable with at the time. Um, <laughs> but this is going to be an interesting one. It's definitely going to be an interesting one because I know for a fact I didn't get this complete and I'd actually like to test this before we get into the code. All right, I put in three sites. I've got the, um, the World Indoor Champions Masters Woman um, and we've also got um, a Prisoner of War. So uh, let's see if um, this works. So I'm just going to search YouTube. Good. Oh, it gives like a score, I'm guessing, of how uh, accurate that result is. Okay, so what if I do um, woman? Oh, we don't have any results for woman. Okay. Okay, indoor works. It, it kind of works. So, to conclude, the analysis of the search terms is not very good. But let's have a look at the code. Oh, I know what we're doing here. So what I was trying to do is I was getting the top 1 million websites and then I was recursively going through every single one of those and getting all the sub websites. That's so bad. I mean, there's not really any way to do it because you have to crawl it somehow, but also um, something really funny. There's a bunch of, this is the top 1 million sites and there's a bunch of porn sites, um, <laughs> in the top sites. Let's try and deal with this, with this from the start. The initialize function I'm guessing just gets all of the websites, which was really stupid. Oh, okay, so all of, all this is doing is it's reading the top 1 million file and it's creating a huge array with all of them in, which, um, n no, <laughs> don't do that. Um, what would be better to do here is actually create a file stream, um, because, okay. Oh, wait, so I did create a read stream. Then why am I reading it? What? I <laughs> so I did do the read stream. Okay, I wasn't that stupid then. So, okay, what I'm doing here is I'm reading the file but and returning the contents of the file but then I'm not really doing anything with it it's just kind of sat there the same with the test sites what so how does this work um chunk size i i plus equals one you know what this is the first time in a very long time I've seen a finally you know block used um I never use these I don't really understand why people use these because you can just do that it's just cleaner less indents and stuff um, yeah. Okay, so it gets all the lines in the chunk and then it processes them. I wonder why I did this in chunks, um, actually. I guess because it's asynchronous? That must- oh yeah, that must have been it. because uh, it's asynchronous. Um, it's a little bit faster. It's not great because it's not multi-threaded, but... I mean, that's fair. Um, I, I have a feeling Dylan- I, I have a recollection that Dylan wrote this because um, Dylan is a lot better of a programmer than I am, and I probably wouldn't have thought this. So, um, yeah, okay, and then index page, which just... Whoa. Um... <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, that's gonna have some horrible time complexity. Okay, let's see. Occurrences, my, uh, occurrences bigger one. So I really don't like this. I would do if occurrences bigger than one continue, and then I would just extract this out like that. Uh, just a lot nicer. Now, um, this is horrible. Um, what? So the, the time complexity of this is really bad because this is O of N squared. Because what you're doing is you're going through every single word that you've already looped through multiple times. This is what I was saying about multiple loops. They're not ideal. Because uh, what have we got here? You've probably, I'm not sure how regex works, but you've probably got one O of N squared operation here. Um, you've got another O of N squared operation here because you're doing an includes inside the, each, each, uh, word. And then you've got another O of N squared operation here. So that's basically three O of N squared. Um, which is really slow considering you're doing this at every single website on the internet. And obviously I didn't realize this. I didn't think of this. I don't think I really cared either. Like if I really cared, I probably would have 
done more research. I was just trying to make an entertaining video. So yeah, anyway, um, not very nice because you got O of N squared here because of the includes. Um, how would I do this differently? Well, let's have a look. So, okay, this is interesting. So the priority is by default set to low. If the word is found in the title, the priority is set to high. If it's found in the description, it's set to high. That makes a lot of sense. Um, it saves, you know, using fancy AI to try and semantically analyze the whole website and prioritize it. But um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of really silly. So what I would do here is I would get the title and I'll, I'll write some code to show this example. Um, and this would be somewhere else. I just want to do it here so you can see. Um, but what I do is I would create um, title words equals new hash set and hash set if you've not if you're not familiar with them oh it might just be set in javascript yeah so just a set um it's basically a hash map but only with the keys so um instead of having to go through every single item in the hash set um and checking each one all you have to do is do title words um and then word uh and this has an o of one time complexity instead of an o of n time complexity which is a lot better so um, what you'd do is you'd got you'd get the title words. So yeah, I'd do something like this. And bear in mind, this is like on the spot. If I was actually doing this, I would think a lot more carefully, uh, careful, carefully, sorry, about how I'd be doing this. So if you have some better ideas, do let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, but I, what I do is I would split this by space. So we get every word in the title. And then I'll go through it and I would say word. And I would simply do title words dot add word like so. And then I would just do title words, I think, yeah, dot has, and then your words. And then that's already a huge improvement in the time complexity, because now you're not looping through every single character in the title every single time. You're just doing a simple O of one operation. And sure, it's not going to be completely efficient, but it's a huge improvement from last time. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can improve things like this. And if you haven't already studied data structures, I would highly recommend it because there are you know, a ton of data structures that can make your algorithms really fast, um, even if they seemingly can't really get much faster. Now, it's a bit hypocritical for me to say that because I'm not that well versed in algorithms, um, but Course Careers was a great platform that helped me out with this. Course Careers provides full length courses in front end, back end development, and DevOps as well. And what's included in these courses is some really in depth information on algorithms and data structures. And these courses are taught by your favorite content creators such as Tech with Tim and Web Dev Simplified. The explanations are really concise and clear and it's really easy to understand the concepts when they're taught by professionals like this. In addition to this, you also get access to mentorship because, you know, learning on your own, it's great, but it has its challenges and, you know, trying to figure out something complicated on your own, it can be a tough task, but having a mentor to help you and give you a step in the right direction is really, really useful and really important in my opinion. But yeah, if you're interested in this either to become a better developer or to get a job at Google or Facebook, be sure to check out the link in the description. They also provide a free introductory course so you can get a feel for what you'll be getting into first. So thank you very much to Course Careers for partnering with me and back to the video. Okay, so that just gets rid of the, the grammar. Okay, that, I mean, that's fair enough. Uh, every time I see regex, I just get PTSD flashbacks. Why am I doing that? Um, okay, an easier way to do this is literally just uh, .concat. Basically the same thing. I think this reads a lot better in, in my personal opinion. Instead of like, because what's happening here is is doing all the regex stuff. In this, inside this loop, I probably loop for each character, um, do all these kind of checks myself, because then it's not doing unnecessary operations that are abstracted from me. As a programmer, I quite like everything to be in front of me. You know, it'd just be nice to you know, pass this yourself, and then you have full control over the performance and time complexity as well. Um, and that also means that now you don't have to loop uh, through every single word and uh, extract the occurrences because now you can just do that all you know while you're inside this loop so it just saves a bit of time complexity because if you're looping through millions of websites and you know if you get to that point where your search engine is constantly updating and crawling the web you don't want to you know you don't you don't want it to be slow you want it to be really fast um, so that's just a little thing it's not inherently slow by itself but when you have millions of websites this can this this sort of thing can have a huge impact and i think that's something really important to consider when you're making algorithms is um you know don't over optimize it if you're gonna run a for loop once over like 500 items it's fine it's not gonna make a difference but um you know if it's a web server with millions of users making requests or stuff like that you want it to be fast because 
um, it could be the difference between a couple of milliseconds and a couple of seconds. So um, that's just something to bear in mind. This is a really important thing. When you're writing performance critical applications, it's really important that you understand what's going on under the hood. And again, not something I'm f particularly fond of with JavaScript is there's a lot of abstractions and the implementations are kind of hidden from you and they depend on the browser as well. So, um, and I know there are standards to try and prevent that. Um, but you know, for example, get elements by tag name. You don't know the time complexity of this and there could be a much better way of doing this, but you won't know because you don't have the implementation in front of you. Um, and you know, doing this in Rust generally, I, I know I'm not, I'm not saying only do this in Rust. You can do it in C++, whatever. Um, but doing this in a language like Rust would be a lot better because number one, Rust is a lot faster because of its uh, memory uh, system and stuff like that. And because it's native to the machine, I'm gonna wait for this plane to pass. Another thing with Rust is because the uh, standard library is open source, you can go and see the time complexity of the algorithms so you can make it really fast. And I'm not saying go and obsess, and I've already said this, but don't obsess over optimizations if you don't need to. I mean, these are fine. Again, I don't really like this because you don't know how fast these algorithms are. It might be faster to write your own HTML parser. Um, and sure, it's gonna be more work, but you have full control, control of the performance that way. Now, in terms of the cleanliness of this code, it's not great, but it's not awful either. But another thing Course Careers provides is actually information on how to write clean code. Cause I think this is another important thing um, that a lot of people miss and just, you know, jump straight from, you know, learning straight into big projects and it can become a mess very quickly. Oh, oh, it's coming back to me now. I know what I did here. <laughs> So I downloaded this file with a bunch of plurals in. Um, I, I put them into the database. And essentially what I was trying to do is if somebody searches the plural for a keyword, for example, if there's a site with a bunch of keywords called elephant, um, but you want to search elephants, well, there's a bit of a problem there because um, this one has a plural and this one doesn't, so it's going to be a bit harder to find. So what I was trying to do is essentially, um, if a keyword in the database exists with uh, with a plural instead of this, uh, say this is elephant.com, um, it would still find the result. And this is essentially what I was trying to do. I don't, <laughs> I really don't think this was the best way to do it because number one, you're doing more operations than the database, which means more storage taken up as well, although that doesn't really matter, as, as well as CPU usage. It means it's gonna be slower as well. Um, and it's not really like, uh, it's not really a great workaround. I would probably use um, something like try search instead, uh, or fuzzy search, sorry. Um, which uh, I'm not sure how fast those are. So again, it's something you would have to consider the time complexity of, but it means that you're getting rough strings rather than exact matches. Um, I'm not entirely sure how effective fuzzy search would be in a database. I believe, I'm sure there's things out there to make that easy. Um, something again, you'd have to look into, but again, it's just a suggestion. I'm not saying that's what you should do. It's just something that if you were making something like this, you would want to consider. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. Uh, let's see. Ooh, more, more fuckery. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, first of all, um, we've already talked about this comment and that shouldn't be there. Oh, so this is the search function. Okay, let's see what we got. So it's, <laughs> it's finding the keyword. Okay, so first of all, I mean, you wouldn't want to get all the keywords with that match because you're going to get like literal millions of results. What you would want to do instead um, is just paginate it. So, you know, get the first 20 results um, and then work with that instead of getting every single fucking website in the database. Um, I would be very curious to see how Google does this because Google is notoriously very fast as a search engine. Oh, and you, so another thing is this nounify function where it's kind of dealing with plurals and shit. Um, I'm making a database query for every single word. Well, no fucking wonder this was slow. Um, no, you don't want to do that. It, I mean, <clears throat> the plurals approach isn't good in the first place, but you should cache you should cache this into a hash map or something like that. Which, sure, it's not ideal because you've got fifty two thousand plurals, but it's a lot better than the CPU usage involved in doing this every single time you want to, um, you know, get a plural. Um, and again, like if it was a desktop application, then 
sure, you don't really want to use too much memory, but if it's a server, it doesn't really matter. It's a search engine. It's gonna be intensive. But there is the line. And if intensive means doing a database query for every single word on a web page, no, not good. Um, <laughs> it's much better just to store all the plurals on a hash map, as I already mentioned, plurals are probably not the best approach anyway. But I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, do let me know. If any of you worked on a search engine in the past, I'd be really curious to know how these work under the hood. Um, so do let me know in the comments. Um, <laughs> I've just called this word map too. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, that, that's the whole project. I'm not going to go through any others today because I think we've covered quite a lot. If you enjoyed this style of video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like me to review your code, be sure to check out the email address I've put on screen here and it might be features in a future video. Now, I'm not going to claim that I'm some kind of expert that knows everything, but I am going to see if I can help out by giving some advice in how you can improve your code and your projects. So thank you very much again to Course Careers for partnering with me for this video. Check out their link in the description below for a free introductory course. And I'll I will see you soon.